<laughs> Ed Basher. Thank you, John. <laughs> That's a cool suit, man. Thank you. I love you, too. <laughs> uh, so let me start with the obvious. First of all, Ed really walks his talk. So uh, I'm going to acknowledge Ambassador Young will be here soon. He was on your board for, uh, uh, I think, a decade. Long time. And you should know that the reason that uh, Delta Airlines flies to Africa is because of Ambassador Andrew Young. And, uh, and you should know that when he first suggested it, before Ed got there, they, people thought it was a bad idea. And uh, I believe one of your most profitable routes now is uh, Atlanta to South Africa and Atlanta to Nigeria, is that yeah, true? Yeah, we've got some of our best routes going to the African continent. And we're the only U.S. major that does it, so don't tell the other guys to start. <laughs> That's right. And we're looking to expand. So it's not charity, it's not a handout. You didn't do it because Ambassador Young, they, oh, this is a nice thing, we're an honor of icon, Ambassador Young. I mean, you put his name on a plane, uh, which is respectable, but you didn't go do these routes because it was a, it was a nice thing to do. You did it, these routes because it's good business. It's, it's great business, and it's also a great thing to do. Yeah, very good. So, uh, and you're my favorite uh, airline. I'm uh, there uh, three or four times a week, and you guys are so consistent, your people are so kind. Uh, consistently kind as if they act as if they're owners yeah. um, and on that point just to show you how much Ed shows up with full force uh, I got up uh, 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 yesterday and I was going to bed actually and I, I thought I was sort of seeing things I start seeing upstairs Delta Airlines signage everywhere <laughs> so, so, so this dude not only decided to show up for a speech he brought like 600 employees and did a conference <laughs> Uh, upstairs and drop some money at the at the hotel. I, I, so I, wherever Kevin Boucher is, I want to renegotiate our hotel contract. I want to I want to cut of that revenue. Um, on a serious point, and without there's there's no partisanship in this meeting room. We don't throw people under buses. We treat people with respect. We uh, give respect even to those who don't give respect to us. So I'm not going to speak uh, to details, but I'm assume that everybody here is an educated person that reads the newspaper. At the very least, you read the internet, and you know what's been going on in the last few weeks that somehow involved my friend Ed Bashan. Let me just say this. Number one, in an environment where you can't seem to find anybody to stand up for what's right, to say what they believe, to stand up for poor people and victims and the indigent and those who don't have a voice, to stand up for something that may upset somebody, but to do it for the right thing to do, to do it just because it's the right thing to do. And then, my God, you can't get CEOs to stand up at all or leaders to stand up at all, but my God, to have somebody threaten your balance sheet or threaten your business and say, if you don't back down, we're going to harm you in some way. And then for you to then calmly say something I think is going to be your calling card for the rest of your career, our values are not for sale. Thank you. 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 much more than somebody hurting your business. I think that they just helped your business because people who I spoke to from both sides of the aisle, by the way, said that's the kind of company I want to be associated with because my children don't have a political party. That's right. My children don't get a vote. They just go, I want them to go to school and I want them to come home safely. And thank God that somebody is messaging in a way that's responsible. It's not complicated. It, wasn't a, it, it, it was like the Gettysburg's address. It was like really short. Like our values are not for sale. President Bill Clinton once told me, it's hard to get somebody to agree to the truth when the lie is paying their paycheck. I want you to think about that for a minute. 
If you want to understand all the problems in this country, I'm going to repeat that. It's hard to get somebody to agree to the truth when the lie is paying their paycheck. And if you want to understand why Jesus got assassinated and Dr. King got assassinated and Malcolm X was taken out and whoever your leaders are, Gandhi, that's it. Too much truth. So for you to step into this breach and do the right thing and say the right thing, even when you were being threatened, says enormous things about your calmness and your balance and your character. You're reasonably comfortable in your own skin. I thought I liked you before. I'm in love with you now. <laughs> I love you too, Jim. Yeah, I got, a, I got a guy crush on you, brother. Okay. Yeah, yeah. We'll talk about that later. We'll talk about that later, right? <laughs> My fiance is looking a little strange. <laughs> Listen, the, um, you know, it, well, thank you for your, your kind comments. Um, we got a lot of feedback on both sides. Of, of the topic, and people said it was a very brave thing to do. I, you know, I, it was the right thing to do, and it wasn't. It didn't take a long time to to decide that. Um, we're out in the public. You know, 80,000 employees flying 200 million customers a year. Uh, you've got to stand up for your customers. You got to stand up for what you believe in, and people want to hear what your company is in today's society more than ever. And that's the company they want to have the relationship with. So we didn't do it for economic gain, as I said, and they weren't for sale. And uh, we're uh, we're happy to, to kind of move on. Yep. And you know the state will decide does what it does, but we'll we're not going to let the state decide how we run our business. You know we're we're believers in the and we're believers in the, in the freedoms on the Second Amendment. We're also believers in the First Amendment. So I had I saw there are two other states that said, including New York. If Georgia doesn't want you, we do. <laughs> um, it reminds me of uh, Paul Austin Jr. is here. His, his dad was a CEO of Coca-Cola right. uh, in the 60s. And when Dr. King won the Nobel Peace Prize, um, everybody thinks that it was about tea, coffee, cookies, and nice feelings. But it really wasn't the case. Dr. King was called Martin Luther King, Martin Luther Coon, Uncle Tom, sellout, and wannabe. And those were from his friends. And so don't understand that leadership is often not easy. It's often very difficult. And no good deed shall go unpunished. So when Dr. King was coming in town, the business community did this. We're not going to honor him. And the mayor went to the man who had a, a more credibility, he went to Paul Austin, the CEO of Coca-Cola. Will you please talk to him? And Paul Austin said, very simple, this man's won the most important award in the world. The world is looking at us. We're an international supply chain company. You don't want to honor him? That's fine. We're going to move out of this backwards town and go someplace we've got some sense. Within a day, it had sold out. And what you see on photographs now is it was, it was lined up. My, my friend Maria Supporter knows this. The people lined the walls of that meeting. So that's, history looks elegant and simple in the snapshot. But in reality, it took Paul Austin to step up mm -hmm. and say our values are not for sale. And here we are on the cusp of Dr. King's anniversary for giving his life so that others will have life. And we have another CEO that steps up and says our values are just not for sale. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and again, we're not, we, we love everybody. And we hope the state comes to their senses and all that kind of, we love everybody. We love the state. We love Republicans. We love Democrats. I love everybody. Now, um, your company has a unique culture and pedigree. Mm -hmm. And I can feel it when I'm on a plane. And we're talking about doing some stuff. We're still talking about that. But whether we, you do some stuff with us or not, you've already done a lot of very innovative things uh, that enrich the corporate culture, that shares prosperity with your employees. Why do you do this? Why do you just take more money and give it to your shareholders? Of course, the short-term view is, Every dime needs to go to the shareholders and starve your employees and starve your planes and starve your maintenance and starve your... That's hardcore capitalism. I'm not serious, by the way. But that's what some people say. Yep. Why did you have a different approach and what are some of the things you're doing? Well, everyone here remembers us 15 years ago and we weren't the condition we are today. You know, we were in a pretty dark place, difficult times, went through a bankruptcy process. You know, Life turns you upside down, yep. turned our industry upside down. 9-11 yep. turned us upside down. And we had to make a lot of tough choices. A lot of our employees lost their jobs. 
A lot of our employees took pay cuts. They lost their pensions, lost their benefits. It was one of the hardest periods of my life to have to go through just to keep the company alive and go through that. And we made a commitment during that time that when this thing does turn around, the employees of Delta Airlines would be paid first before anybody else. Mm. And so back then and still today, 15% 15, 15 of the profits of the company go to our employees. Repeat to, that again. 15% of the profits of Delta Airlines goes to our employees. Not, and the management doesn't participate in that. Management does not participate. We don't participate in it. Our employees get paid. And by the way, if our employees don't get paid, I don't get paid, which is the way it should be. That's right. And so last year, we made almost $6 billion, wow. which means our employees made $1.1 billion in profit sharing. And it's, uh, and, 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 you know, so the questions when I'm, I'm with our team repeatedly is what do we do to make our profit sharing checks bigger next year? Yeah. That means we have to serve people better. Yeah. We have to be able to, to, to drive more preference to the brand. We have to have our equipment operate even more effectively and efficiently than they already do and that we already are the most efficient operator in the world. You are? We are, but wow. it's not even close. Uh, we had last, last year, we had 242 days of the year without a single cancellation on the wow. earth. That not, is, not one. Not one. 242 days of the year. Mm -hmm. If you add all of our large competitors combined, we had twice as many cancel-free days as all of them combined. And as a result of that, the quality of the service is at the top of the charts, and now we're looking for the next mountain to climb. So you attribute, I'm, say, I'm saying this, but I'm asking the question, it just feels like this is a natural question to ask you. It appears to me, Ed, that you attribute the success of Delta and its continued prosperity and profitability in part to your employees, including the ramp workers, the flight attendants, the drivers, the maintenance people, and that you feel there's a responsibility that as you prosper, they must have an opportunity to prosper too? I would just correct one thing in what you said, not in part, but entirely due to our employees. We, uh, you know, today's, today's world, it's, it's common for people to come up and talk about customer service, and it's all about the customers, and obsess about customers. Yeah. At Delta, what truly sets us apart is we obsess about our employees. Mm. And our ability to obsess on our employees allows them to obsess on all of you. And it makes me very proud. Now, yeah. Uh, I don't know if you guys noticed it. Now, and I, you know, I, I'm tr I travel different airlines. I won't name the names. But I don't know if you noticed it. But you get on some of these airlines, and it's like you're doing them a favor. I'm sorry, like they're doing you a favor. Attitude. What you want? Some peanuts? What? What? <laughs> what? I'm busy. <laughs> and you get, on, you, you, you get on you get on the uh, Delta flight and they, you know it's it, it's gracious, it's kind and it's warm. It's like they actually care. <laughs> yeah, they do. I do care. Have you guys noticed that? Because bringing it full circle, we we're just talking about the profit sharing. Yeah. On prop and we distribute the profit sharing every Valentine's Day. Oh. So if there's, a, if there's a day of the year you want to fly Delta, it's Valentine's Day. <laughs> Everybody is happy. Everybody's in a party atmosphere. But I remind our team all the time when we hand out those checks on Valentine's Day is to thank our customers. Because yeah. it's the customers that write those checks, yeah. not me. And as a result of that, they remember where it comes from. Right. So not everything is peaches and cream. Not everything is the way you'd like it. There are still some frustrations that you've got, some things to work out. What a, what are some of the things that, that keep you up late at night and, and bedevil you? Well, you know, the, the government, uh, the challenges we face in terms of government intervention, I know it's a, it's a big topic today, is uh, trade and tariffs and mm. international business. We're a global company. We're, we're an international company. And we compete in, in a lot of our international markets against companies that are subsidized by their governments. Oh, wow. And the Middle Eastern governments particularly. So the Qatar Airways, right. Emirates, Etihad, where they don't have any, they don't need to show a profit. They don't need to be able to actually return their cost to capital. Because so, their, their governments use them as, a, as essentially a travel agency to bring people to their country. So wait a minute, all these, when we see these beautiful planes in the UAE that my man here flies all the time because he's rich, when, when we, Mr. Brown, when we, when we see these government, pla these, these beautiful planes, they're decked out with gold and suites and all that stuff. They can do that 
because they've got no cost right. for the airline. There's no cost. They're only 100% by the government. And as a result of that, they're taking our routes away from us. So we can't afford to, we don't fly to Dubai today. In fact, no US airline flies to Dubai. But those three airlines fly 40 times a day to the US. Qatar, Etihad, and Emirates, and it's wrong. And it's wrong. Uh, we, we've been in Washington, we're getting traction with the administration, and uh, we just struck a deal with the Qataris, and hopefully we'll have a similar deal with the UAE to make certain that, first of all, there's transparency. Right. We, we all compete on a level playing field. Right. And secondly, that their government's not subsidized you know, the flying any longer, because the flying, while from a customer standpoint, it may feel very luxuri luxurious, just think, when you're doing that, you're putting U.S. people out of work. Hmm. And it's not, uh, it's not the right thing to do. And you know, we'll, 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 we'll win in the marketplace, but we also have to make certain our government's aware. So I'd say that's one of the biggest things that we, you know, we're, we're faced with. Another thing is technology. You know, hmm. technology, you can never get you know, far enough ahead of that. We're, right. we're investing heavily in technology. I'm excited what we're going to be bringing over the next couple of years in terms of our digital strategies, our mobile apps. We've got to turn the airline into as mobile and agile a company. We're, we're going to be 90 years old next year. Wow. Yeah, we can't act like a 90-year-old person, right? We've got to act like a sprite 25-year-old, and so that's what we're continuing to push for. So, so what, what, you know, the, the tagline at Delta is keep climbing. It's on every one of our ads. Yeah. And I, I, tell, uh, I tell a good, st our, our good friend Tim Mapes. Oh, yeah, Tim's chief, a great guy. Our chief marketing officer. Yeah. I tell a good story on Triple him. rights leader. A couple, a couple of years ago, we, and we adopted the keep climbing theme when we went through the restructuring. We knew we weren't very good, but we were going to get better, and it was our commitment to continue to right. get better. It's aspirational. Exactly. A couple of years ago, the marketing team came to me and said, you know, we think we're, we're doing a lot better. We should change the, the motto. You know, we're, we, not that we've arrived yet, but you know, we're better than we used to be. And, right. and something, and I, I, I said, no, we're not doing that. Don't ever bring me that idea. You know, we're going to always continue to get better. We're always going to keep climbing, and we're going to look for new mountains to rise to. And it's, it's, a, it's, a, great, it's a great vision. You know, when, you're out the, when you're climbing a mountain, you're looking higher. You can see more. You have, you have, you, you're fearless. That's you know, right. you start looking down, that's when you start to fear. That's right. When you're looking up, you just see nothing but opportunity. Right. And also, when you're looking up, the other guys can't catch you. You're looking up, and they're looking down. Woo! So that's 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 what you all have to look forward to. And we're gonna we're gonna make this this airline, um, you know, not just we already believe we're biased. We already believe we're the very best. Uh, but it's gonna be even better, particularly for this town. So two two questions. We only have a couple minutes left, but um, uh, without getting too much history, what you may not know, but Delta was. Uh, uh, a crop dusting company basically it started with a couple of modest planes um, and it, it had a choice uh, with the Atlanta it really had a choice of whether we were going to be Atlanta or we're going to be Birmingham Alabama and uh, the thing that I, that I understand that differentiated is that Birmingham Alabama is a great city but they got hung up on race and we decided they argued about race we decided to argue about money <laughs> and money's a much easier argument than race was, and they were stuck in this old paradigm. And if you look at Birmingham and Atlanta today, they literally are the tale of two cities. Yep. One got stuck in a discussion about race, and literally many things has not changed. They're trying to change now, but it, it took a long time. Atlanta was very progressive, and everything has grown, including the airline, and you are now the anchor for the, the busiest airport in the world. Right. So does that reality uh, tie into what you do emotionally that I don't know any other airline does. I was with Ambassador Young when you put his name on a plane. Yep. Uh, I, was, uh, I know you've done several of our civil rights leaders. There's, a, I think, a plane for Dr. King, I believe. Why do Dr. you- Dr. Lowry, too. Dr. Lowry, why do you guys do this? Why is it important? Well, we, you know, this is home. And you know, despite all of the fuss around the NRA debate that we just went through a few weeks ago, and despite all the great offers I received from Governor Cuomo and Quite a, quite a number of other leaders around the U.S. We wanted to affirm we're not moving. This is, this is, this is home. And uh, we, believe, we believe in investing here first. You know, another thing we do is that after we, we've now had this profit sharing thing for a number of years, we've paid over a billion dollars each of the last four years. Wow. There's not a company in the world that's done it once. We've done it four years in a row. And all that money goes into the local economy that exactly. they're not saving, goes in the local economy. Exactly. But a few years ago, in fact, one of the first things I had the opportunity to do is when I became CEO, 
is I said, hey, something doesn't feel right. We're doing profit sharing, it's great for our employees. We gotta do profit sharing for our communities. And so we made the decision at that point that 1% of the profits of Delta Airlines forevermore will go back into the communities that we live. And wow. so, so this past year, we put $45 million into our cash, into our, into our communities, a lot of it here in Atlanta, yeah. but all other, other communities around the world as well. And um, you know, again, it's the right thing for our people because they're very proud and we've always given a lot, but we've never made that long-term commitment financially. Yeah. Yeah. In addition to our, our hard work we provide, we'll now have the financial resources to back it up. Now, I'm looking at you strange, Ed. Uh, we're gonna wrap up, I'm looking at you strange because you just don't make any sense to me at all. <laughs> and I'm looking well, at you strange. I'm just trying to figure out whether you have any African or black DNA in you. <laughs> I'm, just looking, I'm just trying to think. Hey, you man. dress, you hey, smooth, you, you got the nice socks on. <laughs> you know, you, you, you know, you're elegant, you know, you're turning red a little bit, so yeah. you, you sort of yeah. match me. Yeah, a little dark. Yeah. You know, you, you know you, you, you're smooth. I'm just trying to figure out whether you're a that's, brother. That's a hell of a compliment. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, hope, I hope I am. I know I am. No, oh, you know, we're all from Africa. But, but uh, one thing. <laughs> Come on, you gotta, I, gotta get, I gotta get through this, hold on. <laughs> window is just, window brass is embarrassed. You're like, oh my God. So, on a serious note, I met you, and I'm, and I'm giving this like zero embellishment. I can't say this enough. I meet a lot of people. Most of them have a case of seriousness. Ha, oh, I'm important. I am, I am the mayor. I am, I, you ain't nothing, but. <laughs> Because the minute you think you're some better than somebody else, you literally aren't anything. We're all, we all far short of the grace of God. We all are God's children. We're just all trying the best we can, right? And you are normal. I hope that's okay. <laughs> Do you know how abnormal it is to meet somebody in power who's normal? So I met him, no handlers, no bodyguards, nobody tackling me. Uh, I got, I said, yo, man, I mean, hello. Uh, <laughs> and I asked for his business card. It was actually his email address. You know, I went home right away. I, I think I typed the email on the way home. <laughs> <laughs> he responded back to me, not an aide. It, it must really frustrate your staff because before anybody else can respond, and go, we really can't do that. He's already said, yeah, this is a great idea. <laughs> <laughs> it does. I get in trouble all the time and yeah. it's wonderful. Yeah. So, I, I, where does it come from? I mean, where your back, your quickly on your background. Well, I'm one of nine kids, so I grew up in a, a large, large house up in uh, upstate New York, yeah. and so I, 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 and I got myself out of there and started working, you know, right out of school, and uh, never, never looked back. Uh, you know, we, I, I like to tell people that, that th thanks for the comment, is that at you know, Delta we take ourselves, you know, we try not, we take our job seriously, but we don't try to take ourselves seriously. Right. And you know, I don't think that's a, that's an attractive quality for, for people to think about that you know you're you're Mr. Serious or, you know, we, we want to be approachable and because the, the 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 tone that we create for our employees is the tone they create for our customers, yeah. and we want everybody to be comfortable and feel at home when you're on Delta. And I, I think it starts at the top of the organization. Yeah. So um, I don't think I need to say anything else. You get this man, don't you? Can you feel him? You're kind. You're uh, kind. So. We aren't human beings having a spiritual experience. We're spiritual beings having a human experience. And I am really deeply honored to not only consider you guys a partner, and hopefully you're gonna do more in the future together. We will. But to consider you a friend. Absolutely, John. And um, I think you're the, the kind of role model. No, you ain't perfect, nobody's perfect, okay? Don't wanna, but you're the kind of role model that we need to see more of in corporate America. And I, I hope you infect everybody you meet with a spirit of normalcy, excellence, bravery, and courage. Ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, my friend. Ambassador. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, they're gonna work. I like that. So, um, my most emotional uh, award for the day for this annual meeting of 2018. You didn't know this, did you? I did not know this. Ed Bastian, Delta Airlines, the Hope Corporate Leadership Award in recognition of Ed Bastian and Delta Airlines for both their sponsorship of the Hope Global Forums and more importantly, their bold action at a time in history where positive examples are critically needed to set the tone for a brighter, more hopeful 
future. Now, that's the official text. But what this really says is our values are not for sale award. Oh, thank you.